Hello, fellow preppers. Tis I, the Rumpled One. Friday, November 2nd, the year 2012. The last apple off of the tree. Thought I would enjoy it. Last night, I was talking to a couple of fellas, and the uh, subject of 72 hour bags came up. One guy said his day pack, his 24 hour pack was 40 pounds. I forget what the other guy said, but his 72 hour pack was sounded a bit unwieldy. So I was thinking about this because I think I showed you how my packs were from back in the 80s and the 90s. I'm working on putting together a pack. And the first thing is, is you've got to remember that you're talking about 72 hours. The purpose of this pack is so you can survive for 72 hours. Now, depending on where you live and what the weather's like, and what season it is, might dictate you make that you change a few things in the bag. So for example, look what happened over on the East Coast, Hurricane Sandy, people being displaced for their, from their homes. What do you need 72 hours? Well, the first thing, if you remember the important things, first thing is you need oxygen, you need air, you need to breathe. Well, in most cases, you're probably not going to have a gas mask in your pack. And that's okay. So you can say, well, I should be able to breathe. So you're not really that concerned in most in instances. So you've got that covered. You just breathe. Now, here's where most people get led astray. They think water comes next. Sorry, people. You can go three or four days without water. But if your body temperature, if you can't keep it regulated within a certain number of degrees, plus or minus, that, you know, 98.6, you're going to die. It's just that simple. So here, in the Northwest, where it's this time of year where it's rainy and windy, what do I need? I need to be able to stay warm. So there's two things. I need to protect myself from the elements, the wind and rain, and I need to be able to generate heat. So, I'll have a tarp, probably one of those little fold-up space blankets, maybe a little fold-up poncho, and a blanket. I'll have about two, three, four different ways to make fire. Matches, waterproof matches, have some tinder, have a... Uh, a lighter or two, things of that nature. Maybe have some uh, dryer lint and a little old film canister and Vaseline. That'll get a fire going. Maybe have a couple of those uh, safety candles. So that should keep me warm. What next? Okay, water. Maybe have a quart of water and a filter. Because here, if it's raining, I should be able to find water pretty simple. Plenty of lakes, rivers, and the ocean. Water really shouldn't be a problem. Just have to filter it. You could always boil it. So, might have a canteen cup for that, a little mess kit. Finally, food. We're talking 72 hours. Now, I work out, so I really don't have much fat on me, but I could probably go 72 hours just as is. But that'd be a little uncomfortable, so I would probably throw in some trail mix, some peanuts. But as far as packing, you know, canned goods and all that, really don't need it. Because I don't want this pack weighing me down. Because I probably want to get out as quick as possible, and I might have to move again. A time or two. So that's why I'm rethinking the philosophy. 
So maybe I'll do a video later when I actually assemble the pack and let you see. But if you live in an urban area, you, you'll probably have some different needs. But the basics are always going to be the same. Air, number one. Number two, regulate your body temperature. Number three, food. I'm sorry, number three, yeah, food. No, number three is water. Number four is food. Because after about three or four days without water, you're toast. Food, you can probably go up to a month. Three, four weeks, some people. And of course, there's some people, well, we don't need to talk about that. Anyway, I'm going to finish up my apple here, enjoying the last apple off the tree. So I hope that maybe helps you with your 72-hour bag philosophy. Now, you might notice I didn't say anything about a knife. Because if you're a prepper, chances are you've got a knife or two on you at all times anyway. You might want to have a flashlight, but you know how I feel about those $100 flashlights and $200 knives and all that. It's not really necessary. You might even want to have a one of those hand crank generator radios like the one I got, but See, as you add this stuff to your bag, it starts to weigh down. So, do you really need it? I mean, 72 hours. Chances are you're going to go to some location, and probably there will be somebody there with communication. Now, you, know, you might not want to depend on that, so you might want to have your own. But it's just something you have to make that decision for yourself. There's not a right way. There's not a wrong way. You know, certain things are facts, certain things are opinion. So, I hope that helps, especially for the new preppers. Once again, thanks for watching and listening, and uh, I'd like to hear your comments. See what you think. Because every now and then, we can say I learned something from my uh, fellow preppers out there. So, don't be shy. I'm not an expert. I don't think anybody is. Some people just have a little more experience than others, but... Once you start, stop learning, that's when you start to die. So remember, if you fail to prepare today, you're preparing to fail tomorrow.